All set. All right. I guess we'll call the meeting to order. Um, and well, why don't we just start off with the uh, the minutes of the last meeting? If anybody has any problem with it, before we get going, uh, is is the meeting open at this time? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Um, I motion that we uh, that we um, accept the meetings as as uh, published. Okay. Second. I second. Motions made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it. Um, well, the other thing on the agenda was to welcome um, Marjorie, but <laughs> <laughs> she's not here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's just jump right into the renovation update with, okay. you know, between Bernadette and I. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, first of all, can I just want to start to let the rest of the members know um, that I've kind of been taking a back seat the last couple of months because my sister was diagnosed with cancer and um, I, for the last month or so, we can't leave her alone. So I've been with her and my brain is kind of like mush. So I'm gonna apologize ahead of time tonight because um, I'm not totally focused where I'm supposed to be. And, but I am focused on my sister where I'm supposed to be. And unfortunately the the museum and, and the renovations and stuff has kind of taken a back seat, but I, I am back and it's a day to day thing. So, um, you know, I, I still spend time with her and my nephew who spends most of the time is going to the police academy the end of April. So, um, but she's doing well. I just want to let everybody know she's doing well. She's holding her own and she's a fighter. So, um, uh, we're just going to take it day by day. And Marjorie's on. <laughs> thank you for the update, Rick, and we've yeah. been praying for it. All right. Thank you all. Thank you all for your prayers because yeah. she really needs it. I'd like to welcome Marjorie. Oh, thank you. To the commission. Um, <laughs> officially. <laughs> officially. Um, I, you're going to be one heck of an asset. Um, oh, thank you. You know, and it's it's going to be it's going to be a slow process for us yeah. to turn everything around and bring everything where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wanted to share one other thing I read today. I don't know if any of you have read it, but the Beverly Club. Um, I posted a thing on a Beverly Club about five years ago when they were tearing it down uh, across from Station One. And uh, it was posted today on on that site that I that I had posted it. Uh, a gentleman put on there that the original owner of the Beverly Club in the 1950s uh, was named Frank, and I'm going to destroy his last name, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> his first name was Frank, um, but what he did is he wound up going broke and going out of business and having to sell the Beverly Club, but he turned around and moved to Salem, and he opened up the Hilltop Steakhouse. Ah. He... He is the gentleman who he bought a gin Jafrida. bar. Yeah, Frank Jafrida. Yep. He yeah. bought a gin bar in Salem <laughs> and turned it into the, you know, the Hilltop uh, Steakhouse, which was the yeah. number one steakhouse yeah. <laughs> uh, owned by a single owner. Yeah. So I guess really the, the thing to be learned from that is don't quit. Yeah. You the know, location, location, location. I wasn't going to say don't open it. Bellingham was the, the lesson. Yeah. 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 So, Route one in Saugus is probably a few more people drive by there. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's just yeah. interesting but, that that's yeah. where he started was the Beverly Club. But anyway, <laughs> Bernadette, why don't we do the renovation okay. update and move on? From so, there. I, I, you know, and, and I've been doing what I can, but I agree, I've been slow on this too, where it's, it's a, and it's just a, it's kind of an overwhelming amount of stuff to take in what we need to do there. So I'm trying to break it down into step one step at a time. So the first thing I want to do is just review our, um, where, where I am. So um, I've, Rick and I went over to the Domino's and we pulled out, we kind of separated the things that we had packed up into there, into these sections of, that we had de designated like the police and fire and the schools and whatever. So we, I have all the schools and municipal stuff back at the museum. So um, as soon as we can get that display case, actually Rick, I wanna to talk to um, Ron about getting that display case on casters. 
because we did that at the library. We put all of our things on wheels. Then if you need to move them around, it's so much easier. Great so be idea. before we put stuff on them, I'd like to get those display cases on the one that we've already painted on casters, because then we can put this, get the school and municipal stuff in it. The pictures are already on the wall there. Um, and then we can just tackle one section at a time. What I really want to do is as I tackle things, we have this inventory that has all the items that are listed, is when I pick up an item, I want to check off that we know where it is, that yet we have it, whether it's going into, you know, a display or if it's going into a box. And if it's something that's not in the inventory, writing down what it is so we know what's in all the boxes or what's on the, on the shelf so we can really go through. And it's just gonna be a time consuming, a really time consuming process. But I think if we tackle it one section at a time, I, my plan is to do the schools and municipal first. That probably won't take that much longer. I probably can get that done in a couple more weeks. Then move to the police, fire and, and civil defense, which is a huge, huge section. There's a lot of stuff in that area. The stuff we have the most stuff from is the area I'm gonna call farming and home. You know, we have glass fixtures and, Maxwell House coffee cans and you know all these other and there's a lot of things there that that some probably most probably don't belong in the museum. I know we have a collection of cameras that I don't they're all kinds of cameras from different age things but I don't know what their tie is to Bellingham. So unless we can make a direct tie I think for for we start out boxing that stuff up and then we deal with the boxed up stuff when we're done and try to make a collection of things that show in the museum. So that's kind of where I am. Um, you're, so you're the, what you shared about the the um the deaccession what yeah the accession the accession and the right the collection all, policy yeah that was amazing yeah that well, was I, a, I basically, an amazing document it is basically it's the Westport Connecticut's document that I adapted um there's yeah. no sense in reinventing the wheel I took the things yeah. that applied to us but it is a so it, you know in the future we won't be accepting things that don't meet our criteria. Um, and then we it can talk about yeah, yeah, and talk about deaccessioning. So the first thing is I wanted everyone's buy-in that as I go through these things, I can box these things up and I can make an initial assessment of whether it belongs to us or not. And I might say, find something that I, like it could be one of those cameras that I think has nothing to do with anything. And then when we're doing something else, I'll find the document that will mm. tell me yeah. why, why, why it's important. So I think that's important to, when I, do these I'll put like I'll number the boxes something so I'll know what number that item is in so if I do find something to help me identify something I can quickly go back and decide that is something we need to keep thank um, god we've got a librarian in charge yeah, that's, of doing that's, this organizing that's, that's what thank that's, god that's, that's what librarians do now not, no. that I, not that I couldn't use help I'm thinking a, a good help point might be someone just to help, you know, someone to be there when I, to type the things while we're going, you know, or two people to work together on this part of the project would be, a, it would make it go a lot faster, obviously. So um, I'll talk about that a little bit further down the road, how I see the, and that envisioning. Um, so Rick and I basically had talked last week, we had two weeks ago about scheduling times to meet in the morning um, where we could go through things. So what I'm planning on doing each week is sending out my schedule on Friday when I think I'll be available the following week, either in the mornings or from like five to six, even an hour after work, four to six o'clock in the afternoons. And if anyone can join us, can join me, I'd be happy to have help doing wherever we are. So I figure if I send out my schedule on Friday for the following week, everyone knows where we are. And if anyone can join me for even an hour, it'd be, it would be helpful. And just, it would be, but I just feel to stop by and see where we are too, um, as things move along. So that's kind of where we are. I did spend a little bit, I spent a little over $500. It was $523.17 on, uh, I got a vacuum cleaner. I got actually uh, um, buying some stamps, a broom and a dustpan, a, a nice entry rug that fills the whole space that is commercial quality. It'll last a lifetime. Um, and then a bunch of things to hang, hang pictures and, and organize things. So um, I have the supplies I need there to start doing, to start doing this stuff. So yeah, that's really good. Yeah, just to touch on what Bernadette was saying is we were die in need in the museum. Now that we're on that, that second phase, basically, we're not on the construction phase. We're in the, the cleaning and straightening out and starting to set up phase. And we had zero for um, oh. supplies as far as vacuuming, cleaning, sweeping, yeah. the floors. There was, there was a broom that was like, like, full, like, yeah three feet, two, two feet tall that like I was hunched over when I was trying to sweep the floor with it. And then it was like an old fashioned corn broom that doesn't pick up anything, you know? So yeah. You, yeah. So I got yeah. one of those little, I got one of those little brooms that has a built-in dust pan so you don't have to bend over to pick up the stuff. So you can just sweep and sweep and dust. Better. 
yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we were a die any of that, but the um, just just to let everybody know too, while we're talking about the renovations, the lighting and the paddle fans and the lights on the paddle fans came out great. Yeah. And yeah. They came out great. Um, it's it is. It's nice and bright. You can see everything. It's going to be. I mean, probably we'll need some area lighting for certain sections. If as we get to displaying things, we'll see how those go. Yeah. yeah. We want to highlight. We right. want to highlight a certain thing. We may have to do something like that. But I also made sure that the um, in the bookcases that had receptacles <laughs> behind them, I made sure it was cut out so that yeah. we could access that receptacle. Right. And I changed yeah. it, put a new one in it. Yeah. So uh, there are receptacles in different locations. So we're pretty, we, we have pretty much what we need yeah. in order to do what we want to do in the future. Right. You know. it, I think we're at a good, I mean, I think anyone who was in there before, if my vision of what it's going to look like when we're done transpires, they're going to be very impressed with how it, it'll be a minimal amount of things, but it will be relevant and, you know, good uh, things we can actually tell the history of, not just have a bunch of things on display mm -hmm. that you have to figure out what they are. And there's no, Great. there's no story to, you know, so that's yeah. my, that's my goal is that the things we put out tell a story. Yeah. It would be nice too, like, Bernard, that we were talking about before too is I, I know that we're, we're getting the crunch time here is that uh, for Memorial Day weekend it would yeah. be nice if we had something set up um, yeah. to show at least the town officials yeah. or the people if we can because yeah. yeah. it's kind of messy in there right now but yeah. it would be nice if we had something to open the doors to to let somebody walk through mm -hmm. you know and I think, I think we can do something. It might not be totally set up, but we could do a, you know, if we can get two of the sections done and not have a lot of junk hanging around, it could be a, you know, a pre-screening of what, what's things to come or something. Yeah, yeah a work in progress. Yeah. Right, exactly. Work yeah. in progress, yeah. Did, did, <clears throat> I, way, did I forget to check on the agenda about whether Tracy Messer was on that for um, having the, the, um, the performer? Oh, we talk, no, that was, no, you know, I didn't even put that on the agenda. So the, the $500, remember that grant we talked about last month? Yeah. Where we looked at, so Marjorie and I looked into it and it was like three days left to do the application. The person she was proposing, we found out lived in New Hampshire and the grant is only for Massachusetts performers because it was from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. So they were trying to give money to Massachusetts performers. And I just didn't have the energy to, 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 to reorganize it. So Marjorie and I had a brief discussion of if we do do a grand opening, this performer, he was wonderful. We sat, we had a meeting with him, Marjorie and I, and he would be great that, is it president? Um, was it, what, what president was it? The one that was for Coolidge. Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge. President Coolidge. Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge. He was actually, the guy was great. I think he would do a great program for us for historical, um, rest, you know, a historical Calvin reenactment. Calvin Coolidge was a governor in Massachusetts right. before he was president. Right. And so it would be the governor coming to Bellingham right. about a hundred years late. Right. Just, you know. <laughs> that was kind of that was kind of our tact. It would have been a fun program, but it's nothing saying we can't do it. And we could use some of our if it's after July, we can use our municipal money to do it, or we could use the money funds we've raised whenever we are ready to do a grand opening. I think it might be worth but we considering. Put, we put him on hold until right. we could get approval from the whole um, commission yeah. that they and liked the idea since we weren't able to do this um, right. Mass Cultural Council. What, what is his fee? What does he charge? It, it was five. Was it 500? No, was it? I forget I what he said. he was willing to work within well, that 500 yeah. that we yeah. were talking about. I don't think... I don't yeah. think it was anything. Okay. We didn't get to. And specifics. I don't think we got that far because the minute when I started filling out the application, it was like put his address in. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I didn't read the full application before I started talking yeah. to him. And when we started doing the application, I realized you had to let the the, no. the person you were paying had to be a Massachusetts resident. He's a so. colleague of mine. He's a, he's in the personal historian organization I belong to. I've known him a long time. He's a he's a stand up guy. And, and just really very endearing and yeah. and clever and delightful and entertaining. Yeah, and, and I think it will, I agree it will make a great program when we're ready to do a grand opening. And maybe, you know, if we take our time, that might even be in the fall, you know, if we get our things to, sometimes doing things over the summer we find is not, you know, okay. a good, Especially this year, I think people are going to be going on vacation if they can. Absolutely. So, so I was going to have a chat with him tomorrow. So at this okay. point, I need to just say, yeah, we're not we're there looking yet. to do it 
in the fall and we'll, yeah. we'll get back to him. Yeah, I would just tell so, him that we're not we're not there yet. So but that yeah. we, we will we're, find we're, the money. We're, we're still interested. I would say we're still interested. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Great. If I, you could will, if you could talk to if you could get I, a final fee from him, that would be great if we knew what I'll to bring that. that back. So we have that for a future meeting. I have an appointment to talk with him right. tomorrow. Just if it's of interest, another group um, that is Massachusetts based is um, that I that I'm I work with is the Second Massachusetts Regiment, and um, you know they they do living history programs. They set up a whole you know 18th century layout of all different types. You know uh, tradespeople. Um, you know they they can do military impressions. They can do you know um, you know women at work. The whole thing. You know what, whatever basically impression you're looking for if it's 18th century they do it is that more of a like a festival kind of thing or is it a one a, or just a presentation no they 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 do just present for example okay. we do um the alden house in duxbury we do um you know events at, at different historic houses you know okay. we'll just set up shop it's just basically co- to get people who are passing by to stop in and say hey what's going mm-hmm. on here Okay. So, you know. so we could do it right at the historical museum, like in the lawn right there. Is there room? You could absolutely right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Either that, or uh, I hear construction supposed to start and Domino's is coming down this yeah. summer. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we may have to move it to the town common, which wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that far away. Right. So to yeah. do that, and right, it would be parking yeah, I... across the street. So. Yeah, I think as far as any event, we need to check in with Dennis on the timeline for the Domino's oh, yeah. mm-hmm. thing because we don't want to have like cranes and I mean, it would probably do it on a weekend, I would imagine anyway, or an evening. So mm-hmm. I don't think there'd be, you know, actual construction going on, but you don't want cranes in the background and, you know, bulldozers if you can, afford, if you, if you can afford them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay. I think uh, the building's probably going to come down fast. It's when they start putting yeah. things back up that's going to take the time. Yeah. Um, and speaking What's of kind of go in that space, nothing. The wide, they're widening the road, and the rest is going to be an extension of the park. It's going to be the um, so it's going to be, oh, yeah, so there'll yeah. actually be more space. There'll there. be more space. Yeah. We might have that's what we're going to, I think we're going to have a better frontage to the road than we do now once that's mm-hmm. gone. Yeah. A so. sign over there would be ideal. And, yeah. if, and if you did it, if it was enough lawn to do a little program out there, we did something for the, the Peak House in Medfield. It was just actually, it was just my wife and I. Um, you know, I was there, I got permission from the town firing off a musket mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. and lots of cars, lots of street traffic yeah, just pulled right. in. Hey, pulled what's it, going right. on? What's going on? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is a great, there is a, there is a lot of opportunity. And I think our, we talked about restoring the sign that's damaged, let's well, not damage, it's just worn that's on the side mm-hmm. of the building. I don't think we do that until we know what we're going to have for frontage there because yeah. get a sign that really, you know, promotes yeah. what, what, what's going to be there. So, you and know, also, also that roadway going in where, Walgreens and the town hall going to the town hall that roadway is going to continue into a condo project yeah. Yeah. which I think the condo associate I should say the builder of the condos is going to redo that so there's right. going to be a lot more traffic on that yeah. road yeah. also mm-hmm. so yeah. we'll have more yeah. more exposure that way too. The other challenge about the Domino's building which I need to speak to Dennis about is we're gonna to have to get all of our stuff out of there if oh, that comes yes. down and we don't know i don't know where to put it you know the, the basement of the museum is full so i might have to talk up to the town about where can we temporarily store this can we get maybe a pod to put on the property because mm-hmm. having access to it is important too either that or we've got to get out all the stuff that we know we need and then just store the other stuff long term. so that's going to be um i'd like leeway on time to get go through that stuff the town yeah. also moved a whole bunch of stuff. The police and fire stuff, Rick, we saw in the front of the Domino's building. Yes. I think yeah. that stuff was in the to- old town hall and they must have needed that for something. There's a bunch of police and fire stuff that was moved into a room in Domino's too. That is stuff we want to we want to go through. So we, we may have to look into with Dennis yeah. of getting a, some type of container to put yeah. in front of the museum yeah. to put all that stuff in okay. because yeah. we're not going to be able to put everything that's in dominoes yeah. and and put it right. in the museum somewhere at, at a short notice so we're going to have to yeah. put it somewhere and when you say in front of, hmm? you know i'm thinking like where you can't see it as well from the road yeah on yeah. the side yeah yeah where yeah. that little staircase where that little ramp is that's yeah. going in, yeah. into the right. building right it's already pretty side. ugly yeah it's already, it is yeah. already pretty right but yeah that's a so that's a <laughs> There's a lot, there's a lot to think about, but there's, there's, I mean, I think 
I'm gonna clear out the space so we can probably bring the sleigh back because that's huge. Because the sleigh that's there is probably gonna go, it's gonna win the farming and home section. And we can it's huge, but we can put a lot of things on it because it's got a lot mm -hmm. of it's got a lot of display space. So that'll there, but there's a lot of stuff over there. There's uniforms, there's I don't even know furniture, lots of chairs, and mo most of it probably is stuff we don't even need. Um, but um, so identifying those things might be more even important than identifying what's in the museum, what needs to be kept and what can be boxed up in. And so that, so that stuff is ready to store if we don't, if we- Is, don't. is there any kind of timeline on when Do the Domino's building is coming All out? I heard was summer. I heard it was summer. Oh, well, uh, yeah. that's good to narrow it down. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, and I'll, I do, did wanted to check with Dennis. What, I, what a DPW said, they had two projects. One was in the North, town that was going first and then the center of town was after that so i don't know when um but i, I can find out when what the timelines are so we yeah. you know and I, I i was at town hall and i was trying to dennis wasn't in the day i was there and it, sometimes it's just easier to talk to someone in person rather than sending an email or on the, over the phone mm -hmm. so i didn't mm -hmm. get a chance to do that yet but i will next time i see him ask what the what the plan is and if we can if possible have a um you know get some kind of a storage thing that because we don't have a budget to do that so um, I don't know what a pod costs, you know, I've, um, it's probably, no, a few, probably a few hundred dollars a month, I would imagine. Not cheap. It yeah. depends on the size that you, yeah, right. depends on the size you get, so. Yeah. 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 Can and, we move some of the stuff into the town hall rooms that we have? Well, they, they moved well, town rolls. No, they moved our stuff out, so they must be oh. using it for something else. <laughs> okay. so think, there is, I know there is, so across, kind of across from the museum, there's that, between the municipal center and the school building, there's that little shed garage thing there and I know the town stores some stuff in there that's mostly file cabinets but I don't know if there's space in there that we could put some boxes or things too I mean it's not climate controlled but they're not they're not climate controlled now in dominoes yet they're just sitting in a in an yeah. unheated building so um yeah I, so we and there might it would be nice to have space close by so we could access the stuff when we need it I mean yeah. there might be place that you know like so I think someone mentioned something about like the Pe uh, not the Petro the old self uh, not that the Pinecrest, yeah, Pinecrest, which is I was Primavera, the Primavera school. There might be some mm -hmm. store place to store things, but but I don't know that we they're want. They're breaking stuff. in. They're breaking into that school every other oh, day. Okay, no, okay. So that stuff, <laughs> that stuff, would, they already took. Ronnie yeah. was telling me they took a snowblower out of there the other uh, no, really. um, over the winter, and okay. so they're breaking in there left and right. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, I think a storage container of some sort that yeah, would be able to handle all our stuff on the side right. of the building would be the right. perfect thing. Yeah. Also, yeah. I was I was approached that that the Boy Scouts are always looking for projects. So mm -hmm. uh, the Boy Scouts, whoever's in charge of the Boy Scouts, would probably be a person for us to contact for help yeah. moving some of this stuff because yeah. they're always looking for something to do. And I said, good because my back can't <laughs> handle all this stuff again. You know, it is, it's great, but we need uh, well, then if yeah, if we had a pod to move it into, great. The problem is, that there's no place to move anything right now, right? And even I, yeah, I, I would, no it would be, it. it would be great to get some stuff out of the basement that we know we're not going to use and put, you know, put it in a, you know, maybe there's two ends of the pod one is stuff that we know we don't need, and so another one is stuff that needs to be gone through, so we can, you know, I, I think what we should do then because we know we got a lot of stuff, yeah, we got it. We had it everywhere and now it's all in dominoes. Yeah. I think the first step would be is to approach Dennis and yeah. say, hey, we need a storage container yeah. big enough to put all our stuff in until yeah. the museum is settled right. and yeah. set up. Yeah. Uh, what will the town do to help yeah. us out with right. that? Yeah. You know, the other thing we need to find out, there. the other thing I need to find out is as we dispose of these things, what do we, I mean, you know, like I know the when the library disposes of things, we can give them to our friends group and the friends group can sell them because they're a nonprofit. Well, I don't know that we have a mechanism. I think the only way to sell town property is to auction it. So I don't, you know, if it's, you know, I, and I don't know what that, so we have to find out more about what we're gonna do to get, because it'd be did, shame to Did we already vote on the, the proposed policy that you sent out to us? No, no, I think, I think this was, it was a very beginning draft policy. I, I, I think we probably should look at that next month and. And any policy we vote, from what I know, policy-wise, you have to um, read it one month and then approve it the following month. So it has to okay. be has to be two two month process. Now there were some minor changes people sent to me on it, but I didn't do. If you want to vote on it this month, we can, and then just make the minor changes and re-vote it next month. 
Um, you got my vote right, regardless yeah. of what I you mean, do. It's great. Ricky, uh, <laughs> Steve sent me a few things to update on it. Like I, there's a few times I missed the word, changing the word society to commission because I didn't do all the finder yeah. places from, from the Westport policy. Um, and then there was a couple other things that Steve brought to my attention that I can update. Um, I don't remember exactly well, what those what's, were. What's the general consensus of the board on yeah. on what this this policy is? I mean, well, I, I, read, I read it over and it sounds good to me. Yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a yeah. policy that's in use by other by other. And there are similar things from a lot of historical societies mm -hmm. that I looked at. I just liked there. And there's some wording that has to be looked at because at the end there was stuff about about getting rid of things and what we can. Um, or, or some, yeah, because there's some stuff like in the police, Bernadette and I went over, we don't need a, a uniform from every police officer that retires. <laughs> right, yeah, no, right. We don't need that in the museum. Right, right. A uniform, one uniform is fine. Yeah. You know, some old police stuff is fine. Right. But just because someone leaves, we don't need everything. Right. And that's yeah. and what and that what this policy does, it says when someone makes like, I'd like to give you my father's police uniforms, you can say, Oh, we already have one from the 60s at the time he served, so we don't need, you know, thank you for your offer, but we don't need another one, you know. So you can, it gives you the ability to say no and still be thankful. Um, the insurance one, and then there was something else that I was looking, oh, the means of disposal, right. I can say we can deaccession, we can deaccession things now, we can say we're not keeping them, but what we can do to, I can't really vote on this policy until I can find out what we can do, how we can get rid of things. Um, you know what, I had a question too. Yeah. In one of the sections, you said something, it says something about, um, uh, with, I don't know if it was acquiring or getting rid of, but it said something about um, it had to be voted on by the members of the commission right and it didn't say whether it has to be like a just a major it has to be a majority vote or a unanimous okay. and is that even important i don't know um, you know let's see so assist, adding well, things uh, it, a question also is if is there any way we can vote on things by email agreement not in it, a not in a no, public. No, it no, has to no, be public. It has to be a public meeting. I mean, you could uh, you you could call a meeting that lasts five minutes to vote on just one thing every week if you wanted to. If there's something that really comes up, you can call a quick meeting, and if you have a majority of members there, you can do it. But it has to be done in a public meeting. It still has to be publicly yeah. posted so 48 publicly, hours, publicly, right? Right, publicly posted 48 hours, and it has to the public has to be given the opportunity to attend. Okay. So the um, let's see what this committee this thing that policy is. It makes a collections committee. So the collection committee could just be two people that get to make all these decisions. And okay. then you would not have to have a public meeting because it is a committee of, of, a, of a members that are already appointed by the group to make decisions. Okay. So I think that's what we ought to do. If we ought to have a collections committee um, of less than a majority of mem members in the commission. So I think it has to be two. Two people by the collections committee that make, and then you bring the decisions back to the group. And I think Obviously, you would want the people to have, if something was like, does anyone want to get rid of the bell? You know, it's like, no, but, you know, if it's, if it's something that some, you think might be controversial, you bring it to the full group. But if it's a school desk and we have six school desks and there's no, you know, nothing special about it that we can find out, then. Well, if you have three members on the collection committee, then you've got the tiebreaker right there. Right. Right. But I don't know if, I don't know if it can be a, so. Technically, we can have seven members on this board. We only have six people now, right? There's nobody missing, right? Yeah. So, um, so three would not even be a quorum if we had the full seven members. No, I mean for the collections. For the committee, collections committee, three people. Yeah, that's true. It, that it's way, still, there would be a tiebreaker if one person right. said it should go, the other person, person said, said it should stay, stay, right? And the fifth person. But see, a committee, a collection, a committee would not have to have a public meeting to make those decisions. I think I, I'll double check that. I think a committee can make decisions outside of the library does yep. it all the time we had a like we had a library reopen opening committee to, to make decisions about the library in COVID times so we didn't have to have a board of trustees meeting every time we wanted to say mm -hmm. we're going to open if this happens or that doesn't happen you know so um and there's nothing saying that um if i think it is something controversial you'd probably want to bring it to the group but i don't think you'd do, anyone would do, want to do, get rid of something that was controversial without bringing it to the full group so I think this has still has some work to do before we can vote on it, frankly. Yeah, one, one thing that you might want to put a, a an estimable, you know, financial number on that, like, you know, something 
I don't even know how to define it, but <laughs> I could definitely see a situation where someone, th you know, thinks something is not appropriate, for example, yeah. and they want to nix it from the collection, but it's, you know, historically significant, but you don't want to display it because there's an yeah. uproar about that you know, this year, like, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, you don't have to display everything either. You can have collections that are in storage. Right, right. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can definitely see someone's, you know, worldview, you know, causing a little bit of dissension there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, you know, this this particular bell maker had slaves, so we're going to get rid of his yeah. bell, yeah. Yeah. you know, and right. whatever, like, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. it might be significant, so that would you'd want to bring that to the full group and say, right, yeah. is, that, is this really a good decision? I wouldn't want that in the hands of one or two members. Right. Yeah, I think, I think this needs some work and may, I don't know, does someone, Pam, do you want to work with me on it over the course of the month, maybe? Sure. Yeah. I, unless, unless someone else wants to be involved, but I think Pam's the, yeah. Okay. Pam and I will work, <laughs> we'll work on trying to draft, get a better draft for next month's meeting. And I'll try to get some questions answered about what we can do with things that we dispose of. It would be great if, I, I think if we, the only thing I can do with selling things, and I don't know if this may be wrong, but I think we could have some kind of a sale, but we couldn't put prices on things. So it would have to be donations where we could say, we're cleaning out the things in the museum that we don't need. And people could make donations that could go into our gift fund. Now that might not be the, the wisest way, but it might be the only thing we can do to, um, to get some money back for things that we, you know, if somebody wants a Maxwell House coffee can. I don't know. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to have to find out from Dennis and Mary what we can do as far as disposing. Um, and some of it really is just trash, obviously. And some of it's not even worth um, hanging on to. But no. okay. So that I'll, we'll work yeah. on getting that updated. Um, All right. I think um, that's, and that's, I think that's, I mean, that was my big thing this month. I do have Steve's list of the top tier stuff that he had identified already. And I'm going to keep that in mind when I just start designing what we, what we put on display. And if I, as I find things, at the, my vision, we have a big display case that's gonna be right when you walk in the door. It's a, one of the older ones, it's a nice wooden one. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm gonna do is as I, as I find things that I think belong in there, I'll identify them and just set them aside. And then I can share the list with you guys of what I think will be you know, primary things on display um, in, the, in the display case when you walk in the door. Right mm -hmm. now in the school area, we have that 1891 bell is between the two windows. So that's on display. Um, in the police and fire, we have that, what is that, the, the air raid siren or whatever that is? Oh, the, yeah, that was on top of uh, the town hall. It was on town hall, an air, air raid sign yeah. on that. So, so we have some bigger things that are already have spaces that we know where they're going to go. Um, but I think in the display case, what those top 10, I, I forget, frankly, see if I forget what the things you identified are, but any of those that should be under lock and key will go in a display case, things that we don't want people to touch. Um, I think we will have things obviously on the bookcases that people, I think we can discourage people from touching them, but make it that we don't care if they do, you know, we can have, have it, you know, but anything Even, we don't want people to touch, I think we need to put behind glass. Yeah, we can or put just, I was going to say we could, with the, the way the uh, shelves are set up, we could always have a, uh, a, a quarter inch, uh, whatever piece oh. of Lexan or whatever screwed over that particular shelf so nobody can touch yeah, yeah. the items That's, that are behind it you know that would be accessible to us but yeah. have or, ronnie basically have ronnie yeah. design how to how we would do it because you don't or want even to cruise put, out every time yeah you know? or even put things that we think are put them up higher because some of those shelves are higher yeah. things that we, we wouldn't want kids to touch or whatever put those things up, up higher up over the doors yeah well, that actually brings up an, a point of a lot of times um it's good to have something that people are good. allowed Can't to touch. touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And yeah. that's something yeah. that, you know, you want to not put everything off right. limits. That's right. that, those are the dead museums that nobody right. ever wants to yeah. go because you can't touch anything. You can't interact with anything. Mm. Right, right. And yeah. So for specifically having things that say, please touch. Yeah. Is, is a really nice thing the, to make it more approachable. That policy had a thing where, um, the, the, the acquiring artifacts, artifacts for use in educational programs. So things to be handled by students that are not part of the permanent collections. That it's just, a, that was their language that they did. They had stuff that was, so maybe if we have duplicates of things, we can have a, a touchy collection, you know what I mean? Of, I don't know, mm -hmm. like, and, the, and, more, and this might be more when it comes to household goods, like kids can say, this is how we used to, you know, 
beat eggs like this or something. You know what I mean? Something that they haven't seen that they can this touch. How we type book reports. Yeah, back. right. Exactly. Yes. We didn't. But have we have. Well, we printers. well we have multiple typewriters, so there could be one that you know the the John Lundvall one could be on display, and the other one could be like, what was it like to type with one of these older typewriters and try to get it set up that someone could actually sit at a table and kind of. Have, it, have jam some the, paper in there. Right, and jam the keys like everyone else, like everyone did in the old days. That happened to me. First, first of all, you have to tell the kids what a typewriter is. is yeah, well, I yeah. think they, they get this. Know. But it looks I had like a kid a asked me what, what kind of computer it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When looking yeah. at a typewriter. Yeah, yeah. but it kind of looks like a keyboard, so I think they'd get the idea, but yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that happened to, that happened to me when I, I did a tour. That might be a really good idea to try to find a space where we could have like a lower table where we could have stuff for kids to touch. You know, the other thing, yeah. and this is just an example, this wouldn't work, I don't think, uh, it actually, but when we went to Plymouth Plantation, um, when you go into the different houses, some of them had actual clothing that the kids could put on. So if you have extra uniforms that oh. we're going to just get rid of, yeah, you, know, you could put mm. them and the kids could just try them a on. Photo so. booth. We could have a photo yeah, booth. Yeah, great. Make money. Charge. Make money. Maybe we find a, a, a use for that outhouse after all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll have Ronnie, Ronnie build us another. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that outhouse, believe it or not, was not old. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was done recent. Yeah. Um, when we took it all apart. It, yeah. It was like the seat. The seat itself was old, I think. The only was thing, old. the only thing that was old was the seat and the door. Yeah. The rest yeah. of it was built uh, at a at a later time. Yeah. Um, now but, that's something you really want to keep, right? The seat yeah. from an outhouse. <laughs> yes, we got that. Seat from an outhouse. <laughs> it's wow. got signatures on it of who sat there. And it had a. Yeah. It, yeah. The best part is in the room with it was an old Sears catalog. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I thought that that was that was pretty clever. Yeah. 1900s or whatever yeah yeah but um, uh I, I i know when i my wife and i did it we did a tour in narragansett bay and we, and we went out of jamestown and we stopped at rose island light and the rose island light the, the lower level you can stay there and sleep there it's an inn i guess if you've got the the uh i i should say if you have the the guts yeah. <laughs> to stay there because the place is haunted <laughs> and the grounds are haunted because of it was a uh, I guess goes back to the civil war there was a hospital there you know well and uh the lower level there was a typewriter on a table and a little kid was in front of us and he said to his mother what's that yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's that and it, just like yeah. Sam was just saying they, they don't they haven't got a clue what that yeah. is so yeah. do you do you guys know that supposedly the museum is haunted have you yeah. heard that story our yeah. museum yes Yes. So if you go on YouTube, actually, I think we have it. So it was a librarian who worked there when it was the old library. They would hear footsteps and they would hear things. And um, I think, I don't, I forget who it was that interviewed her, but it's on YouTube. And I think it's on the Bellingham Library's YouTube page, the interview with this woman about her experience in the in the library, like after hours or, or they'd like, they'd come, they'd leave something one day at night and they come in the morning and it would be absolutely moved. Like where no one, no one had been in the building. That's sounding it's, vaguely familiar. Yeah. yeah. It's, I'll see, you know, I'll send the link to the video out to you guys because it is kind of interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, well, maybe we can get in touch with her and she can help us move <laughs> stuff out of dominoes and put it back. <laughs> the wind, the, the ghost, the ghost. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why great. not? <laughs> It probably could have been Jeff Bellinger, right? Because well, I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if Jeff Bellinger. did the program. Bellinger. I don't know who did the program. Um, Jeff did a program at the museum, but I don't know who did the video. I'm wondering if it was Joan Joan Goodman that they interviewed. I don't know. I, no, it, that's not who it was. I would remember the name All if right. I heard it. But I'll send Con you guys the list. Was it, was it Connie Peter? Mm, whoever it is 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 Connie's. Whoever it is was still alive. Well, obviously it was alive. It's in the, it was, this was done, the interview was done in the time I've been at the library. So the interview was done in the last 10, 12 years. Oh. So it's someone who's been yeah. alive. Because Connie is, yeah, I don't, Alan, I don't know who Alice it was. Alice Poltz or something. Maybe it else. was Alice. I think that's who it was. I think it was Alice. Yeah, I think you're right. But I'll send the link to the video so you can all watch it because it was kind of interesting for a little, yeah. for a little so foray into the interview with Alice Poltz. Is that yeah. the right one? Yeah, yeah, you got it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the ghost of the Ernest A. Taft Museum. There you go. <laughs> wow. Yep.
All right. Yes. Send us, for the record, send us the for the record, I haven't seen it or heard anything out of all the time I've spent in the building. Okay. So, <laughs> so just show it. Just yeah. So I it. used to read. I used to hang out in the basement there and read books in the eighties. So yeah. you know, uh, when I, I was brought kid, my kids help, to didn't programs there. Then. Yeah. But we should we should have um something where that can be played at the museum. Yeah. Yeah. Are. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is it on the library's page, Steve? Is it library that? Yeah, the YouTube page is Bellingham Library. Library. Okay, so it, it was definitely YouTube. goes on our on our yeah. social media. It should go. That should that would be a good thing to yeah. We should we should play. I just thought of it when we started talking about. <laughs> I, it's, I mean, when was that put up? Probably more than ten years ago, right? Eight years. It says. Eight years. Okay, yeah. It was I knew it was a while ago. July seventeenth, twenty twelve. Okay, I knew it was a while ago. So what? yeah. So um, I'll share the link with all you guys. You can watch it. Oh yeah. Um, and I don't know. So that's. So we'll work on getting a new, uh, the collection policy done. I'll get a few questions answered so we're ready for next month to have a first reading of the collection policy. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna assume, I'm gonna box things up according to the general outline. We're not gonna get rid of anything anytime. So they'll be, you know, they'll still be available. No, we won't make any decisions on anything, obviously. All right, why don't we uh, jump into, we already took care of the collection policy draft yeah, review yeah. And, and the renovation update. So we'll, yeah. why don't we just jump into the budget? and uh, I'll update uh, yeah. on that. So, um, where are we? Uh, let's get the numbers. Move my finger. My papers are out of order. Um, so we had 800 something in the missile budget and I spent five some, where did, where did that, I can't find the numbers that I had written down here. I got too many papers, hang on. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we started with $4,500. We have $386 in the municipal, um, budget. I'm going to use the that 500 something dollars that I spent hasn't come out of this stuff yet. So I'm going to spend down the municipal money first, get that spent because that ex money expires in July and we don't get to keep that. If we don't spend it, we have to give it back. The gift fund rolls over from year to year. So any money we keep in the gift fund stays in the gift fund. Um, so uh, we have $1,760.65 still in the gift fund. On July 1st, we'll get another $4,500 from the town. Um, so that will that will replenish our our municipal bought money um, and you know I, the things I bought are there and um, I guess as I need things I'm just going to buy you know I'm not I'm not going to buy anything extravagant without checking with the group but if we need small things to get things done they they have to be purchased but I got a, I bought a whole bunch of supplies I have a whole bunch of mats I have a whole bunch of picture hanging supplies I have the loose site. Um, frames that you can use to describe things. So I have a whole bunch of things that are already already purchased that we can use to to start putting the place back together again. What kind of mats are you talking about? For a picture frames. So we got all those. We oh, got people oh, to donate frames. Yeah, we got pick people to donate frames. I had I bought off white mats so we could okay. mat the frames. Sure. And there's probably more than we're going to need to begin with, but they, they they were selling them in groups of ten. It was cheaper to buy ten than it was to buy four. So I bought ten of each size because <laughs> the way they sold them it was cheaper to buy ten than it was to buy four individually. So I found it all. It was actually it was a it was a reseller on Amazon that had them ten packaged by ten. So I got ten of each size. Go for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on the you, you were talking about the top tier. That's that was yeah. the next thing the discussion yeah. on the inventory of the top tier. Is there any yeah. more that you want to bring up on that tonight? No, I just like if anyone else has gone through the inventory list, Marjorie, have you seen the inventory list? I don't think so. Okay, well, I'll share that. I'll share that with everyone again too. The inventory list, and if people want to look through it and things that you think should absolutely be on display or are the best of the best, let me know so we have opinions from as many people of okay. where of where those things go. Sure, okay. I'll be happy to look at it. Yeah. So I'll share that with everybody. And I, just, I just wanted to share uh, just a moment of my thinking on on some of the things that I picked. If you get a chance to, I don't, I don't know how what, what ex exactly the database you're going to look at is. I marked up one of them. Yeah, I'm, um, that's the one I'll share because I think it's good to share ones with things people. I mean, do we want people to look at it blind, or is it okay to look at what you've already recommended? Oh, I, I yeah, I love being you know having the first dibs on it. Yeah, ahead, look at what, I, <laughs> what I think is important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, my thinking on it was I was trying to think about, you know, um, you know, sort of Bellingham through the years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it's it's um, it's colonial history. It's it's history, you know, throughout the Civil War, rural stuff, um, you know, agrarian lifestyle all the way up through industry. Like, you know, um, industry around here, mills have been critically important um, in, in earlier um you know, all kinds of, uh, they were bootmakers all along Hartford Ave. So, 
that one of the one of the bootmakers, a few examples of his boots are there from the Civil right. War. So we, I thought those were relevant. We have boot mate, we have boots, we have like the things they use the I don't know what they're called, they're rock, iron things that they made the boots on. They're like yeah, so we have a bunch that we have a bunch of um, the boots. So if you see stuff. boots in a museum, you're like, you know, what does that even mean? Like you might right. see boots in a list and say those don't look important or impressive. But when you consider like some of the history, if you look at along Bellingham out, uh, Bell, uh, Hartford out yeah. in Bellingham, yeah. um, that road, you would see bootmakers all yeah. along it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that yeah. I think and I think that's where the the frames describing what they're seeing and why it's important is important. Just showing yeah. some boots. You know, though these are boots from the these are boots from the 1800s. Great, but why why are they important? Why are they important? Unfortunately, some of those have some provenance with them too. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Is there room for any new business that I? I yes. Yeah. This uh, I I want to make sure I just got a grant through the senior center to interview Bellingham seniors in the coming year uh, for up to ten people for one hour phone interviews, and this is going to be to try to get some more background of people's um, history here in town. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it really was supposed to be as a connection, making connections with seniors who are isolated, but it's also a potential way for us to be more aware of um, gathering some more oral, oral histories. Mm -hmm. Is that anything that we are gonna want to get, you know, when I get permission from people, uh, we've got this, the book, from the Bellingham 300 that has a bunch of, of these histories, right. but is there more that you would like to get those or copies of those once they're done? So are they gonna be oral histories or are they gonna be written? You're gonna be writing the story. Uh, I'm interviewing them as an oral history, but I will transform them into written narratives okay, in first person. I mean, obviously the con I think the commission would be interested in, in having you. copies of those, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to house them, yes. Or maybe they could become Crimfield comments stories, some of them, or sub, or well, I don't Pam know. Is already, yeah, Pam has already said she, she'd like any that people are willing to put in the bulletin. I'm right. fine with them going in the Crimfield comments or the bulletin. Yeah. I'll just need to ask permission as I right. engage people. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm asking if there's interest. I think a Crimfield comment story that was maybe that you, you know, say how many people, 10 people you're interviewing? It's going to be up to 10 people. So if you could make that into a story about the 10 people you interviewed for the, you know what I mean? And then, uh -huh. then you could refer people to the, um, to the, the bulletin, original, to the bulletin yeah. or, or, or whatever for another, for another, for the full sure. story. Yeah. Sure. So that's, you know, that's going to, it's going to be months in the, yeah. in the making. Maybe. I've, yeah. I've only gotten one volunteer so far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Someone asked me how you what the criteria was, how you were going to choose people to do this. First come, first serve. That's what I, that's what I said. I, I may have my father-in-law reach out to you then. He's uh, he's in his 70s. He's a uh, uh, Vietnam era. I, Navy I, would del I would be delighted to. And I also, if he's a, if he's a veteran, I also have a standing invitation to record this for the Library of Congress through the cable station and do all of the stuff required to get veteran stories to be recorded. And that's a recorded oral history. It's a, on an MP4 that we, we record and send into the library. There's a few conference. stories that he likes to tell too. He was, I think he was on the Hornet uh, when they picked up one of the Apollo missions, so. Nice, oh, nice. Yeah. I, I'd love to interview him. And that's, that's a really a standing, standing invitation. I'm just not chasing people down at this point. <laughs> but all right uh great so i guess we'll we're gonna we can jump back in when we jump into new business if we want to get with that uh colonial era yeah. stuff uh steve you yeah, wanted so i made an offer the guy countered with um fifty dollars so it'd be about 54 bucks if we wanted to acquire that that's for one of them or both of them that's for one of them <laughs> So and what was, was 150. 150? I, I told okay. him we were we were yeah. a historical commission and okay. he you know came back okay. with uh you know 50 bucks okay. shipping it's about 54. So the yeah. only way to purchase that at this point would be if we vote is someone has to buy it and get reimbursed because we don't have a credit card, we don't have a whatever. So I, I would buy it and get reimbursed if you guys okay. decided you wanted to acquire okay. it. it. Says colonial air. I I I maybe oh, yeah. I wasn't here at the last meeting, yeah. so. I'm not 
too sure what this document is. So I, I can share it on the screen if yeah. you like. Do I have to let you? Okay. Let me see if I make. Just take have, me a second to get do it. Do I have to, do I have to make you co-host and make you share? I think I'd, I'd like you co-host so you can share. I don't think you can share documents without me giving you access. So can you see it? Oh yeah. Yeah. So if you yeah. see it's it, at the top there, it says uh, to David Thompson of Bellingham in said county of Suffolk, yeoman. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he's being called to court for uh, for failing to make good on, on a on a on a loan, so on a debt. Seventeen hundred eighty-seven. Seventeen, yeah. 17, so, so this and this complements those Thompson papers that we found in Clara Mays's. So desk, presumably, right? he's a member of the the Thompson family of Bellingham from mm -hmm. the from the eighteenth century, of which we have the Thompson papers collection. Right. So I thought that this would be a good addition to the to the Thompson Papers collection, which is currently sitting on my desk. And, I, and I, that's the um, a lot of interesting letters and stories there. I I, I do. I mean, it, you know, he, he know. must be of the same. You yeah, know, how I, many Thompsons were living in Bellingham and in 1786. I know. I know. I have no problem with the fifty yeah. dollars. Yeah. I, so, but. I'll make. A we need to make somebody yeah. make a motion. Uh, I was going to make I'll a motion to spend fifty-four dollars to acquire the Thompson papers from um, the collector that Steve has identified. Who would second that? There you go. Okay, motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Excellent. So that would be a reimbursement, right? right. To yeah. Steve yeah, I'll take care of that. Acquiring okay. the. Uh, so who do I submit that to? Just give it to me. Get send the send the copy of the bill and proof of payment to me, and I will get it to the town, and they'll cut you a check. Will do. Sounds good. Now yes. we're we're on new business, I guess. Presentation by board members. New business. Anybody's got any new business? We can bring it up. I think we kind of covered where we stand right now at the museum and um, but I just like to reach out to all of you somewhere between now and <coughs> excuse me and Memorial Day if we can get Boy Scouts your help yeah. to set up some type of a display that would be nice to open up the museum to would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, it's we definitely need muscle from the Boy Scouts if we can or the football yeah. team again. Um, but, uh, I think there's a lot to, of stuff I can't, yeah. I can't lift anymore. We have to be ready with a plan first. So I think that's, let's, let's yeah. get the plan together before we, we solicit the muscle. Yeah. I, I, don't, yeah. Full I, warning. I don't know who's, in, I don't know who's in charge of troop 100. Now I can look and see if I can find out who that is. Um, mm. but that's, um, but the football last time we just put it out on the website with, um, the sign up genius and we got a, you know a decent number of people so we could try it and if, if, that was there on a weekday during the pandemics so people didn't have much to do i think if we do it now we'd probably <laughs> we'd probably have to do it on a weekend because we're not going to get people to volunteer on a weekday um like no, we did with the football like we did yeah and everything, so that was last it's summer where people were schedules were a lot more flexible so yeah okay so uh if anybody we already covered the collection policy so yep I would say if does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring up? Nope. Nope. All right. Anybody wants I'll to make, make a vote? To adjourn. All right. Second. We got a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Talk Aye. to you soon. Have a good Aye. night, everybody. Thank, good night. thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.